and we should be streaming. I'm just waiting to get. Hey, waiting. <laughs> oh, guys, have you ever seen that video? Nice. Let's see. If I was gonna be basically gonna be, let's see, ten nine eight five four three two one fun. There we go. It's a pink reference. Okay. Have you ever seen that video where they have like uh, that song, but they do it to the um, little pink elephants like sequence from Dumbo? You know that freaky one that makes you not want to drink alcohol. I'm just gonna tell you right now. The only thing I remember from Pink is her scurvy song from the SpongeBob movie. She was in the SpongeBob movie. No, there was a SpongeBob special where um she was singing about scurvy with a bunch of pirates, and she's like, "We got scurvy, and they're like, we need some vitamin C.'" Oh my goodness, I need to check that out. I was. What are we on air right this very second, seaweed? Apparently, <laughs> you're, you're the one in charge. I literally have no idea. Yeah, no, that was a lead-in, fam. Hey guys, what's yeah, up? Well, this I is my online identity in the palm of your hand. Oh, so much power. I'm gonna try my best not to let it go to my head, but I mean, we already have two subscribers, fam. Two entire subscribers. That's pretty awesome. I mean, we're basically celebrities. <laughs> anyway, if people are just tuning in, this is the Spaghetti in Motion podcast, where we bitch about things that nobody cares about. Is that a tagline? Yes, indeed. And uh, we bitch about them in a way that makes the other person look like a bitch. <laughs> but wait, I already look like a bitch. How is that going to work? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I thought... Um, yeah, you're right. So, I am of the seaweed. Yes, you are. Because I'm real paranoid about memes and junk and whatever. But, you know, anyways, Ryan, you hit it. How you guys doing? So, my name is Ryan. If you've seen me online, I'm usually going by False Bulls 123 I do a bunch of shit that I'm not going to pimp out right this second because that would be rude. And me and my bestie would be talking about stuff. We're going to, like, you know, do a podcast. So, um, I thought one of the... Yeah. I thought one of the fun things that we could do is maybe we could, like, each take turns, like, picking kind of a specialty, something that we're really, really, like, well-versed in, and then just, like, I don't know, talking about it. Do you want to go first, or should I just, like... I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, set the format. You're kind of a... You're the one at the head of the table, but... I mean, like, bro, I consider us, like, equal co-hosts. Always be bringing those ideas if you want them. Well, you're the one in charge of the tech, so even if I was to go first, you can just edit it to make your front go first. I mean, we're live streaming, and honestly, I'm probably not going to edit this, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. And that's why he's in charge of the tech. A lot of it's just because I edit a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, but did you want me to go first? Yeah, go for it. Okay, yeah, go so for it. I figure if there's one thing I know way too much about, it is podcasts. Okay, this is in this essay, I will. You are going to get it. I'm going to get into this. I think the first podcast I ever listened to was Welcome to Night Vale. At that time, I didn't know what a podcast was. I was like Apple iPod in 2005. Who? I don't know her. And so I'm just like, this is awesome. It's like a TV show, but for my ears. And I got, like, way too into it because I was on Tumblr in middle school. Then from there, I listened to The Adventure Zone. I think I got... Yeah, I got into The Adventure Zone, like, before I met you. I had to think about that because I know you're, like, a giant McElroy fan as am I. And basically when I started really getting into... Po- yes, you are, though. Like, he is a bigger McElroy fan than I could ever be. And I'm going to get into that. I got really... In- hmm? I'm going to hold on to that topic, but keep going. Oh, yeah, like, no, you're definitely the expert. But, um, basically, I got really into podcasts, I think, in 2017 when I started editing the podcast database wiki, which you've probably never been on because it's, like, a random wiki on the internet. But I did maybe, I'm going to say 800 edits about on that wiki by myself. I'm just going to my own horn here. I added, like, a fuck ton of photos. I wrote about almost 70 articles, I think. Might be like a few less, but it was 
I think I was like 10 away from like officially doubling the wiki just by myself. I spent a lot of time on it because I was very bored and I needed something to do. <laughs> So I spent a lot of time, like, you know, what, listening to podcasts, writing about, like, podcasters that exist, like, uh, T-Biscuit, that's, I think, one of them, anyway. And it's, like, so I spent a lot of time with that, and through that, I also started my blog, so the Boolean blog, where I, like, actually started writing about, um, podcasts, and my biggest one, the one that I was always, like, fanboying about was, um, the Black Tapes podcast. I love the Black Tapes, it's the only piece of clothing I have of... It's the only, like, show I have merch of, and I spent way too much time obsessing over the entire, like, Pacific Northwest podcast family, because it's just, it's a time. And so, yeah, I've probably written more about podcasts than anyone I know, and it's definitely something that I am very familiar with. I know, it is a lot. Okay. Now, real quick, on the, on the whole McElroy thing, yes. I, uh, believe it or not, did some research on, uh, on our podcast and format and uh, found out that we are uh, missing a crucial part of the podcast formula. So, what okay. I learned in my travels is that the, any, in any particular podcast, the three core, um, what are I saying, you know, Three core groups need to be uh, represented. That is Twink Bear and Hawk. I think at this current junction, we have the Twink and the Bear, but we don't have any hosts to speak of. So, for the sake of argument, audience, no. I mean, we do have some pretty hunky audience members out there. Obviously, they've been hit in the gym. Okay, and that is not helpful. Put your mind to it, you can be the bent, the himbaliest. Yeah. <laughs> I am pretty dumb, but, okay, let's see. So I think it's your term to no, pick no, a... You're the, no, you're the bear, I'm the twink, because I have head. I see where we're going with this, yes, you were definitely the twink in this friend group. It's just because you're so tall. That's just how, that's the only indication. <laughs> Okay, that actually is a very apt description to what you look like in real life. Okay, so, let's see, my twink co-host, how about you tell me about your expertise? And you can have more than one, we're probably going to do this back and forth for a while. Good point. I feel that. I feel that. I'm trying to get Ryan, I'm trying to get you watching it right now, right? Okay, like, I am trying to watch it. It's just, it is, like, subbed, and there's so much going on that I really had to, like, sit down and, like, focus on it. I'm just... I have started the show. I want you to know that. Like, one of these days, I will finish it, and I will rave, and I will be like, Chris, I am sorry that I have, like, you know, squandered this beautiful anime, because it is, it is really great, like, the parts that I have seen. Um, yes. In, in my opinion, at least. But, yeah, I think you have a quality down, opinion. Down, I trust down, your down. opinion. I just realized I've fallen down. Son of a bitch, I've fallen down the hole talking about uh, Ava again. So, anyways, I like a bunch of different yeah. stuff. I uh, like to gravitate around different artists. 
like uh, the Drocky Crew and uh, oh my goodness, uh, Vinci Pop and uh, what about the Honey uh, Honeycast, Honeycast Ashley and mm-hmm. shit like that. I uh, just got into Drocky like the other day. Maybe a little bit more uh, NSFW type artist. Oh! We'll, we'll save that for the, the loot! We'll save that for the premium podcast. We'll save that for the premium podcast. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's a Patreon. Maybe it's an OnlyFan. Um, we don't know fans. <laughs> um, anyways, I follow a lot of stuff about art and video games. And I'm really into video games. And I'm okay. weird shit, I guess. I mean, um, I do like weeb shit. So I guess, I like... Do like weeb shit. You, mm-hmm. you can't really go wrong with weeb shit. You can't. Um, I mean, you can, but... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you I, I, read a lot of, I read a lot of manga. I mm-hmm. watch a decent amount of anime. Um, I play a lot of indie games. And, mm-hmm. uh... I don't know. I like listening to weird music. Excuse me. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I don't think your music's weird, but people call my music weird, so. Sorry, what? Sorry, I didn't hear that last part you said. Sorry, I was being weird. Oh, yeah, no, I was just talking about weird music. No, I feel that. Oh, what was I listening to the other day? I was listening to this musician named Payday. She's basically, if Girl in Red decided to rap, and I love her. Oh, I love Girl in Red. Have you listened to, like, that one single on Bad Idea? Uh, no, I didn't. The first thing that comes to mind with uh, Girl in Red is uh, Oh, Hang Up. Oh, yeah, I, I love that song so much. No, but, like, seriously, like, Bad Idea is the most, like, beautiful thing ever, and I still can't, I can't believe you haven't heard it, like, oh, it's so good. But, um, yeah, so speaking of anime, I, I thought... I mean, I don't, I don't follow her as close as this is true. While we're on this topic, why don't we, uh, why don't we do something that you brought up? Oh yeah. Also, this isn't the uh, this isn't technically our first podcast run. We Good point. tried doing an introductory podcast about a week ago. But I fucked and, up the audio. Uh, due to well, I was gonna say due to reasons unknown, we try to say to that. But, uh, <laughs> half the audio didn't get. Half the audio didn't get picked up, so uh, we had to uh, ditch it. So now this is our real first one. And uh, yeah. last time on it, uh, my boy Ryan mm-hmm. brought up a fun little icebreaker that was like one thing you're watching, mm-hmm. one thing you're listening, and one thing you're reading. And um, since we're kind of getting into the music, in the music realm, why don't you, uh, why don't you take us off there? What's something you're looking into right now? Okay, right? um, really good point. So, I started a podcast maybe last week. Kind of just been vegging out lately, but, uh, let me actually pull it up. It was a true crime podcast, which immediately, every time I say that always makes me want to start singing Penelope Scott, but give me a second to pull up the name so I can mention it. Let's see, I think that was what it was called. Yeah, I've actually been listening to tr- all my podcasts on Spotify now. I used to do it on Google Music, but they basically, like, were shitty and said, oh, transfer all of your podcasts to YouTube, like, podcasts or something. And I tried that, and none of my podcasts showed up, and I'm just like, well, fuck this noise. So, um, I found it. So, it's called The Clearing, and it is not having the most easiest UI. There we go. And it is by um, Pineapple Street Media and Gimlet, which I thought was interesting because I've mostly only heard audio dramas from Gimlet, but they have some pretty good production quality. So I assume that they're probably like involved due to the production side of things. But um, yeah, when April Belosia was 40 years old, something she feared for decades was finally proven true. Her father, Edward Ward Edwards, really was a murderer. And so it's basically like one of those um, docudramas where they are investigating a serial killer. Very Alice serial, you know, always like being influential to the medium. And I thought it was like pretty interesting. It had like a lot of things, had a bunch of them. Is this like based on a true story? Uh, yeah, so it involves the um, daughter of the murderer 
who literally called, like, the cops on her dad and been like, yo, fam, my father be, like, murdering bitches. And then he got, like, arrested, like, 20 years later. And so she's basically teaming up with this journalist to investigate the other murders he may have done. And so it's also, like, going into, like, his um, prison sentences, into, like, his life, and, like, all of these, like, found, like, cassette... Because the guy was, like, always recording himself, so they have, like, thousands of hours of, like, cassette tapes and this entire audio book he did. It's crazy. I do love anything, like, involving cassette tapes, so... Yeah. What have you been listening to? You definitely know. Um... I will just real quick back on your topic. Oh, yeah, sorry. I definitely know a lot more about uh, podcasts in general, like you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, crime podcasts, too. I, um, I, don't, I don't really know that much. Oh, crime podcasts. Can you recommend me some, some introductory ones? Okay. Oh, well, it's real good, but it's also just a real big time thing. So, I'm going to tell you a big secret, and it is my biggest personal shame. You think it would be something bigger, but nope, that's where my personal shame is. I have never actually listened to Serial. I know, I am trash. Like, I know why it's important. I know that everyone loved it. It's like the most famous podcast ever. I just, I never listened to it. And it's like, and I think, like, should I listen to it? But I figure, like, by this point, I should just make it a thing and do, like, a literally recap of every episode, like, while I'm listening to it. But, um... No, real quick, I'm gonna I'm tell you on this one. Mm-hmm. You haven't listened to Serial, even though you're the podcast guy. I've never watched My Hero Academia, even though I'm the guy. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna, like, I will accept that, like, camaraderie. I have also not seen My Hero Academia, I don't really know what it's about that much. I just know there's a lot of really creepy fan art, and I try not to, like, look at it. But, um, probably the best thing to yeah, ask... No, there's, a, there's a lot of creepy fan art. Uh, wait, hold on. Have you ever seen Sky High? The yes. Sky High? Yes. I really like Sky, Sky High. High. Okay, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's cool for kids learning how to be superheroes and get their superpowers. And, like, uh, honestly... Fuck Batman versus Superman. Sky High was where the deconstruction of the superhero myth is at, okay? That is the real, like, you know, yeah, postmodernist interpretation we needed. <laughs> okay, I guess, like, if you want a podcast rec, um, hmm? One more time, sorry. It might have been, because I know Disney was doing a lot of live action around that time period, but I can't imagine it being Disney. It just, it does not feel like this style. It might have been Warner Bros. I'm looking it up right now. Let's find out, fam. But see, now I'm curious. It's on Disney Plus, so it might be. I am, like, very, like, concerned about this. Yes, it was produced by Disney. Wow, Disney actually made a good teenage movie. Haha, ha, I'm joking. Don't come for me, High School Musical stands. But, um, if you want a good podcast recommendation, uh, what are you looking for? Just, like, something that I would, like, recommend. Uh, so, there's a lot of them. I figure best case scenario is just give you one of different formats. I'd say if we're looking for a good serialized audio drama, I always recommend The Bright Sessions. Uh, basically, imagine if the X-Men had a therapist, and also that their like abilities tied into their mental health issues. And so it's basically one half superhero, one half like mental illness, and then a sprinkling of the gays, which we always be loving to see. If, let's see, there's also radio plays are a really big thing. Give me a second. Uh, I'd probably recommend Uncanny Count. What is it? Yeah. Uncanny County. It is a radio play like podcast. I think they're on the second or third season. They've won a f- absolutely fuck ton of podcasting awards. And then I guess we should probably get a nonfiction. I'm trying to think what I have listened to there. I don't listen to a lot of nonfiction. Let me just scroll through like my ones I'm actually subscribed to. Uh, two I'd probably recommend just because I thought they were really cool is, um, one is, don't you just love when it's just on the tip of your tongue and you're just like, what the hell was I talking about? Okay. Oh, that's the best. Isn't it? Okay. Um, one of them is, um, 
remember? No, I remember. I remember the thread now. One of them is called Ear Hustle. It is actually really interesting. Basically, it's um, every episode is actually recorded inside a prison. So that's like just cool on first hand. And it's about, I believe at this moment in time, they have been released from incarceration. But basically, both hosts were former inmates of the prison. They talked with inmates and former inmates. And it was basically just a look into the lives of being in the American prison system. There's also Our Strange Skies, which is a... Basically, it's like lore for ufologists. It's all about, like, aliens and alien documentaries and, like, all these, like, alien sightings that happened. Lore, obviously, is always perfect. And, um, last one I'm probably going to recommend is... Actually, two more. Code Switch, it is by NPR, and it is a really in-depth discussion of a whole bunch of different sort of racial topics. And... It goes into, like, everything. It talks about um, the Pulse nightclub shooting and how the intersectionality affects that between Middle Eastern Americans and people of, like, you know, queer identities. It talks about the idea of the invisible rub sack. Another one in uh, Florida back in, like, Yes, I believe 2016. I can't quite remember, but, yes, basically one of the biggest armed... What's the phrase that people use? Um... Armed assailants, that's it. Yeah. And so, like, they go into, like, a bunch of other things. They've also had, um, like, celebrities on there that talk about them. One I really enjoyed was, um... Oh, give me a second. Nasrat. Samin mean Nasrat. She's, um, basically this cook of this novel called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. It's just a really fantastic... Almost primer to, I guess, culinary theory... And she was just basically discussing, like, you know, her experience as an Iranian-American woman and, like, you know, how that affects her cuisine and who she is as a person and how she's treated in the industry. And it was just very insightful. Um, Last thing I'm going to recommend is improv because there are obviously many improv podcasts out there. And I would love to recommend Hello from the Magic Tavern. It's the story of a man who accidentally gets sucked into a fantasy world. Hmm? Have you heard it? Behind a Burger King. Stand for I am a huge fan of comedy. I thought it was fascist. So that's definitely something that's much more in your wheelhouse. Basically, the only two stand-up comedians I have listened to, like an actual set, besides I guess Gabriel Iglesias, is um Cameron Esposito, love her, and um, John Mulaney. Those are like basically the only two I know any bits from. <laughs> Oh, I did, um, listen to... Yeah, those are really big. Oh, I did listen to, um, Tig Notaro's, like, memoir last year. That was really good, actually. I love Tig. Like, we can all stand her. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, I listen to everyone from everywhere. Like, uh, Bo Burnham, Nick Fu. Mm-hmm. Uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, Sav and the gang from Tom Town. Uh, yeah. Love, that's something. Hometown. They've got, they've got the trio right there between the hunk and the fair. Mm. The, worst, the worst children's fairy tale ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like, now I kind of want to write a fairy tale and feeling those characters. Like the bean, the straw, the coal, bitch, we don't know her. It's the twink, the hunk, and the bear. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the podcast where I make increasingly obscure references. Okay, moving forward. Um, Let's see. I have been listening to... I am going to go a little bit more classic and talk about uh, some music stuff. Yes. So, um... uh, I, I like to... I like to get around looking at a bunch of different genres. Mm-hmm. Lately, I've been kind of obsessed with the genre of... Okay. It's a very interesting combination of it's acoustic pop, basically. Okay. No electric stuff. Need to clarify something. Did you say oak as in tree or folk? With like an F. Folk. Okay. Okay. I know where you're from. That like um, AJJ think it's considered folk punk, right? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Andrew Jackson Jihad is. Mm -hmm. Like a quintessential 
from punk band as well as um, what I think of Velvet Underground is probably a more uh, well known interesting type of genre. I've never thought about that, but yeah, that they are very folksy. <laughs> I always forget that, like, punk can be, like, a lot soft. I always imagine punk, like, being very, sort of, hardcore, like, that very, like, extreme 90s sound, but I always forget that punk has, like, a softer side to it as well. Yeah. yeah. I still need to listen to of, like, <laughs> Intensity. Talk, mm-hmm. Kind of, like, the emotion behind what they're talking about. So, someone like, so, a group like Andrew Jackson Jihad, mm-hmm. let's say, um, uh, my favorite album from them is uh, People Who, The People Who Eat People Are Who Keep People Alive. I love that album. Okay, yes. Yeah, it's just a bunch of, it's a bunch of kind of like Western motifs and Wild Wild West type mm-hmm. atmosphere. Thinking about um, like band, like cowboy banditry and yeah. stuff in that realm. And they have some really they go really really hard with lyrics but they do it with like acoustic guitars and washboards and Mm -hmm. a jug okay the jug punk (sighs) no i i really do love anything that's like traditional americana or anything that's folksy like that Probably one of my most, like, favorite, like, out there bands I listen to is American Murder Song. Do you know them? Sounds like something you would listen to. I just can't remember if I've ever talked to them about you. Uh, have you ever seen Reaper the Genetic Opera? Reaper the Genetic what? So, Reaper the Gen... Gen... I can't talk to you. (laughs) Have you seen that, though? So basically, the guys who wrote the songs for that decided, you know what I want to do today? I want to make, like, an entire, like, three albums, and they're all murder songs, and they're all based off of the America Americana murder ballad tradition. So every single one of their songs is just like, yo, what if bitches were being murdered? Also, I'm in their third album, I think, yeah. Uh, the Killing Four, I think? Pretty sure that's the name of it. They actually do a cover of one of your favorite bands, Jenny Was a Friend of Mine. They do two covers. It was that one and, of course, Pumped Up Kicks. Oh, yeah, no. That, that's something else. Killers is, like, my favorite band of all time. But, yeah, keep going. Yes. And, by the way, guess what they do for Pumped Up Kicks? They have, like, a... I don't think it's a 21 Gun Salute, but they have that, um... But they have that sound from it, the part where they're, like, you know, shooting off the gun and then, like, unloading it and, like, doing that flip thing like you see at, like, you know, military parades. They have, like, the Foley work from that as part of the percussion beat to Pumped Up Kicks. The music... It's just, like, it's the most... It's not, like, goth in sound, but it's, like, goth in style. Like, it's just, like, it has that sort of, like... I don't know, like, dark, macabre sound to it, and I, and I love the shit out of it. It is very, very dark cabinet. But, um, yeah, no, folk punk sounds totally awesome. I have been getting into more punk lately, but it's more things like, uh... Sorry, what? Uh, just, if I, if I can recommend a... Yes. ...folk punk thing to you, mm-hmm. look up, look up, uh, the guy Harley Poe. See, that does sound really good. I'm also just intrigued by, like, extreme washboard playing. Also, we should, like, totally do a... We should, like, totally make a Spotify playlist one of these days of, like, all the music we reference on this show. That'll be a fun time. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna be, like, it's gonna be several pages long. It will jump every conceivable genre. It's not gonna have any consistency. No. It will probably literally go from... Let's see... Yeah, it's probably going to go from everything from, like, Spoiled Milk Titties from Cupcake to I'm a Member of the Midnight Crew by... I don't remember who sang to it. Um, 
um, Eddie um, Morton okay. apparently came out in 1912. Anyway, but um. I was gonna say something like Dream and Team Major from Tally Hall or something. Ooh, wait, okay, I fuck wait, okay, like quick um actually so. Dream Sweet in C Major is actually done by the, like, solo project Miracle Musical, which is made by a member of Tally yeah, Hall. It's not official. Yeah. I know what you mean, though. I'm just like, um, actually. <laughs> oh, I fucking love Tally yeah, Hall. I, yeah, they're good. I, you know, Banana Song Slap. Yeah, I have probably heard it, but I'm not hearing, like, it coming to my brain at this moment in time. Do you not see Banana over on the White House fans. Here they come with some for me, freshly taken from the banana tree. Is it a Telly Hall song? Give me a second. Yeah. Do you want the banana? Do you want the banana? You know, if I like heard it, I would probably instantly place it. I'm just blanking. But obviously yeah. you are a much better Telly Hall fan than I am. I mean, I can definitely feel that. There is definitely way too many songs. I'll be just like, what? You haven't heard... But, like, no, I feel you. Like, I definitely had, like, times like that in the past where I'll just, like, listen to a song. I'm just like, what is this song? And I'll find out, like, years later. Oh, I actually... A little off topic, but I actually found a song that I've been trying to find forever. Right? It was covered on one of my favorite shows. Well, favorite up to her sixth season, Dropped a Diva. And in the second season, Paula Abdul comes up, and she starts off, and, like, the main character starts singing What I Lie to You by, um, Year of Mix, right? I had literally only ever heard of Year of Mix do, like, um, Sweet, Sweet Dreams, I made of these. And so I had never heard that song before. I finally found it years later, and I'm just like, you mean there was an original, and I didn't just have to keep watching, like, this, like, two-minute clip of the same thing over and over again? Ooh, also, fun fact, um, that cover was, like, apparently arranged by Margaret Cho, so that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I do, I... Oh, my goodness, so... I didn't know what she also has a song called Eat Shit and Die, but, yeah. That is an interesting coincidence. I'm starting to wonder how many, how many, like, songs have that title. I guess we should probably move into the next category, and that's, um, What We've Watched. What shall we wear today? Okay, so I've been trying to do this um like fifty two like movie challenge, and I still need to watch um I know what you did last summer, and then another movie this week. So look at me being lazy, but I did watch um another movie the other day. It was actually pretty good. I think it was on yeah. I didn't think about it because most of the movies I've been watching lately have been on Tubi. Because I am a sucker for cheap-ass horror. But, um, I did watch a horror movie the other day, and it was a, like, slasher. And I actually really loved it. It was... It wasn't, like, you know, the most innovative thing, but it was a fun thing to watch, like, you know, especially after you've had a beer or two. And if my, like, internet will actually go and I can look at my letterbox account and see what the damn name of it is... We will actually have... What the hell it was called? There actually seems to be some pretty interesting movies coming out this month. Um, I remember there's, like, this time loop, like, romance thing that's coming out. Not Palm Springs. It's, like, a new one. It sounds like a John Green novel. And then there's also a, um, like, either a historical drama or a biopic about the Black Panther movement that's coming out after, like, Valentine's Day. So that's kind of cool. That's just on my radar. Ugh. <sighs> Come on. Yeah, sorry if there's some noise in the background. Oh my gosh, like, literally, I am dealing with the buffering. And I remember a beautiful little toilet rhyme. I don't mind the ads. Hmm? Sorry, what? Yeah. No, that's just my low cousin getting ready for bad. Okay, 
did it go? Am I looking at it? Is it just going to show me? Sorry, what? I couldn't hear you. No, he even has solid bones, and he doesn't swallow stones to aid in his digestion. It's, it's so weird. Like, the next thing he's going to tell me is that he's, like, unable to fly, and there's a word for that, but I don't remember what it is. Like, there's specifically a word for that. I cannot remember what it is. Oh, well. I know. Look at me not knowing words. Yeah, it work. Yeah, let's just go with that. Okay, I found it. It's called Hellfest. So let me tell you about Hellfest. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so basically there's like... I don't know, you're, you're standing like horror protagonist, you know? She's like 5'7", she's blonde, she probably has like, you know, a couple of friends, and she's usually doing some sort of extracurricular that becomes important. And so, basically, she goes to this carnival, and I think it was actually a Six Flags or something, that they dressed up to look like a horror-themed park. So, basically, think of the park from Scooby-Doo, like the original 2000s movie. Not original. You know what I'm saying. Like, imagine, like, the live-action Scooby-Doo, the original. Oh, yeah, no, you're talking about Scooby-Doo, I hear you. Yeah, so imagine that park, right? And then imagine that it's just, like, uh, trying to remember... I think it's, yeah, I think it's, like, one guy by himself, and then a couple, and then the chick, and this guy that she, like, totally has the hots for. And so, the first half hour, they're just, like, walking, excuse me, walking around, like, doing horror, like, going on rides and stuff. And there's, like, barely any murders, and then they basically... It's hard to describe. Pretty much the movie is just them, like, walking around, and it's like, is it real? Is it not real? Like, not to the same extent as something like, um, the house that October built, but it kind of had that same vibe. It's like, are we actually seeing what we're seeing, or is it, like, you know, an act? And it ends with the main girl and her best friend running through this last haunted house attraction while being chased by the serial killer. And it was just really well done. Like like I said, it's like a popcorn flick. It isn't that, like, you know, super amazing. But it was a fun time, especially if you like slasher films. And there is one thing I did want to mention, if I can find it. Because it's actually... Oh, two things, actually. First, Tony Todd cameos in it. And you know I will literally watch anything that Tony Todd cameos in. The other thing, and this is a kind of cool shout-out, is um, one of my favorite characters... That was loud. One of my favorite characters was a named Taylor. They're like this um, super like alt girl. I think I sent you a picture of it earlier. So I'm like, this is my new favorite like alt girl. But um, the played actress named Bex Taylor Claus, who's actually non-binary. And while um, they play a female in obviously the movie, I just thought that was really awesome. You don't get to see a lot of non-binary Hello? representation. Well, 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 yeah, I'm here. What was the last part you heard? You there? Hearing something, but I'm not sure if I'm hearing you. Um, yeah, I heard something about that loud and non-binary. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll stop back from when I dropped my pen like a dumbass. So, basically, there's a character named Taylor. She's, like, super old. Uh, real super... quick, I want to I wanna hop in here. Mm-hmm. Yo, what's up? I just want we have had no reason to shop a bed, but um, you know, ain't, ain't gonna stop us from giving you the giving you the hot takes that come to mind. Anyway, keep going. Sorry, though. Oh, yeah, no worries. Yeah, basically, the character's named by Bex Taylor, played by Bex Taylor Claus, can't speak today. And the only thing I just really want to shout out is they're actually a non-binary. And I always just want to shout out whenever I see that, like, you know, in film, because we don't really get a lot of spotlight on, like, you know, non-binary and, like, gender non-conforming, like, you know, actors and actresses. Well, 
actress is gender neutral, but I guess, like, thespians to be even more gender neutral, you know? So it's like, that was just, like, something cool that, like, you know, I was reading up about. I'm just like, yes, get that rep. <laughs> like, Seb, it was pretty cool. So what have you been watching lately? Nice. Yeah. Uh, something I've been watching recently is I've been going through a few different things. Uh, the one that sticks in my mind the most is probably going to be, I'm, I'm more of a TV show guy than mm -hmm. uh, Ryan's a movie guy. Yeah, I watch um, a lot more movies. I've been watching a lot of Curb Your Enthusiasm lately. Okay, I've heard that. Is that a um, Earwolf production, or am I imagining things? Uh, it's not. I don't think it's Earwolf. It's, uh, it's on HBO. Okay. I think I've just like seen it around the same circle, so I probably just made that assumption. I'm vaguely familiar with it, though. It's like um, a... No, but it's... Uh, yeah, Headlighter is Larry David, who is also um, a one of the headlighters on Seinfeld. Okay. So a lot of... Okay, so is um, it like a sitcom? Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it's a sitcom. It, it's very much in the vein of Seinfeld, I say. It's, it's uh, supposed to be about Larry David going about his regular day, his regular life, it, living, in, uh, living in California and playing himself. And it's a matter of the kind of stuff he comes across and he has the best intentions going into something like using the handicapped bathroom because like the other stalls were filled up and he really needs to use the bathroom so he uses the handicapped bathroom he comes out and there's just a guy in a wheelchair sitting right there in front of him like wait, waiting for it. And he's like, "What? What the hell are you doing in there?" And he's like, "No, the other, the, the other stalls. They were, and they looked over. And the other stalls are empty now. And he just picks the definition of cringe. It is cringe distilled. Oh my god! <laughs> into like a pill that is shoved down your throat over the course." of each and every 30 minute episode. It hurts so bad, but it is done so well. As someone with a lot of social anxiety myself, I, I, I relate to this far too, far too much that I care to digress and explain. Hey, no, if I'm, I totally get that. Like, that actually sounds, like, really interesting. I always just assumed it was, like, a variety show, so I never, like, got into it, but I might have to check that out, like, even if it takes me forever to watch it just because of, like, how intense it is, because there's some shows like that, but I can only, like, watch a couple episodes at a time. The, the first one is... The first one... The first few seasons start out pretty broad, but as they get into more specific scenarios, it starts to... It starts to cut deeper and deeper and it's outrageous how like Larry David he is he's an amazing writer. He's an amazing comedian, amazing comedy writer, and he he just hits the notes way too well. Oh, well that's pretty awesome. You know, I remember you yeah, mentioning you've exactly watched like a couple of TV shows. Like to not know how to function in normal society. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. Was there anything else you wanted to shout out for this section, or did you want to move on? Uh, for this section, I've been, I don't know, I've been watching, re watching a lot of stuff. Like, uh, I guess I'll also leave it at Adventure Time. I've been re watching Adventure Time. If you haven't watched Adventure Time, watch it. It's a really solid show. And okay. it's just, 
I do need to watch Adventure Time, mostly just because Rebecca Sugar is, like, the best person ever, but... What are you watching on? Is it... It's kind of a cultural milestone at mm-hmm. this point. No shade if you haven't watched it, but... Like, yeah. Probably one of the best things even higher recommendation than Kirby and Enthusiasm just based on like the environment us yeah. two young 20-somethings were brought up around. Oh, uh, you know how it yeah. is. Just a whole bunch of queer coding and pastel colorings. Oh, yeah. Wow, that really does describe early 2000s cartoons. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that was listening watching and now reading yes so i think i mentioned um i've almost actually finished the book i think i mentioned in my first i'm probably just gonna do it again just because it's a really good book so i've been reading this memoir i'm almost finished with it called uh, major conflict the story of a gay man the ass don't tell military and like i already told you like a couple weeks ago you know like secret cursed episode is um basically it's just like what man he's talking about like his experience as a gay man hmm i like that yeah no i came over a couple days ago yeah basically it's just his story and like you know him experiencing things like you know what's what i'm looking for toxic masculinity like homophobia and like a lot of it is basically tying in his concept of what it means to be a man what it means to be a gay man and what it means to like be in the military and how this all sort of like you know or like together i remember this one section i thought was really interesting and there's a lot of sections that just like make you stop and think like you know they're like really great but he's basically talking to the, his boyfriend. They're like both in the closet. They're both in the military, and they're mentioning how they don't feel like they fit into sort of what was the mainstream gay society at that time. This very flamboyant, very politically active, like you know, I guess like you know, queer culture. And very much so. Very much the very flamboyant, very like you know what we would think of as like a queen. And so it's, like, for them, they're both very hyper-masculine, very, like, you know, traditionally masculine, like, you know, men. So it's, like, even though they had that sexual orientation, they didn't really feel, not kinship, they didn't really feel connected to what they perceived as queer culture. And I just, I think about that, and I think it's really important, just, like, whenever we're talking about, like, you know, queer representation, to acknowledge that not every gay person is, like, super campy or, like, super masculine like there's a lot of different types of gender expression like that are seen like you know gay people on a monolith like any other demographic and so it's like i was reading that i'm just like that's just a really great point no no one's a flanders what no one's just a man who's trying to think of like other things that flanders does you mean not everyone's just that one neighbor who's really into jesus Yeah, we all contain multitudes, which I don't know why I reference that so much because I have never read a Walt Whitman poem. Okay. Sorry, I was just looking at, um, uh, the... That sounds interesting. I'm not nearly as, I want to say, cultured or steeped into that, I don't know, into those kinds of stories in general. Mm-hmm. It, it's, I, I don't know. It's, my whole take on that is just, like, I don't know where I'm going with it. No, I feel you, I, and... The more I'm trying to get out is be yourself, but mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't really think about it that much. And that's totally chill. It's like, for me, I've been trying to be, I guess, more conscientious with my reading, but... I think whatever we read, we do for a purpose. Like, a lot of the things that I pick up, I want to pick up because I think it's interesting. But sometimes being interesting is seeing something from a different perspective or from a person I haven't heard a story from. But it's also great just to read what you enjoy. There's, like, no shame, like, no judgment from that. That, that, that's definitely a good point. I, I don't read nearly as much things as like, what am I thinking of? Topical or uh, politically relevant. Yeah. Well, super be, chill. Would be the word I'd use. I, just, I mainly just read the things that 
It sounds like a douchey thing to say book has covers for a reason. Hey, but there is I, nothing douchey about marketing. Speak your truth, fam. It's an adver- yeah, it's an advertisement. If I see a cool guy with a sword, I don't care. I don't care, really care about, I don't know, every single... He can, he can be whoever he wants to be. I want to see him use that cool sword. Yeah. No, I totally feel that. Yeah. So, what have you been reading lately? Well, um, I've been reading a book about a cool guy with a sword. Ooh. Oh, I think you might have mentioned that. Uh, That's, um... Yeah, so it's not... yeah the, uh, this is also something that was on the Curse of Lost episode. Oh, um, yeah, Redux! Yeah, well, uh, not a book, but a uh, but a manga called uh, Vagabond, mm. and it's based on it's based on this uh, famous Japanese swordsman, Masashi uh, Miyamoto, mm-hmm. and it's kind of a, it's a fictional telling about a real life person who's kind of known as a very prolific swordsman of. Um, of the Sengoku era in mm-hmm. Japan. And uh, the entirety of the story is just about this one guy uh, walking, ar- walking around Japan honing his skills as a swordsman. You learn a little bit more about his backstory as time goes on. You learn about where he came from and who he was and who versus who he is now. And um, it's very interesting story because it is both spiritually introspective in talking about uh, very very uh, meditative Buddhist ideas mm-hmm. while at the same time depicting very violent and very graphic duels. Yeah. No, that and sounds like super awesome, bro. Very, yeah, it's a very interesting juxtap- juxtaposition to go back and forth between because Mm -hmm. this guy um Masashi he he's an amazing swordsman but more than that he is a he's dedicated to survival Mm -hmm. more than the typical Japanese ideal of the honorable swordsman who knows when he's defeated and kneels before his better before being cut down instead of doing that he's like no I want to I want to live so if he loses like if he gets his sword knocked out of his hand he doesn't just like accept that no he throws dirt in the guy's eye or grabs a rock and bashes his head in with that because he's going to survive mm-hmm. and that's kind of what makes him the great the great swordsman that he is because he doesn't just accept defeat uh, noble or not mm-hmm. he, he uses his environment he uses his mind and he uses his determination to just win yeah. and I, th- I think it's hilarious isn't the right word but I find myself I find myself just laughing a lot of times at just the outrageous things that this manga portray that this manga portrays. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very. First of all, uh, the author. I am horrible, horrible at Japanese names. I'm so sorry. But Do your best, fam. It's a very. It, it's a very popular title. I'm sure you could find it online like that. Oh, yeah. But, um, the mangaka, he is an amazing like, amazing artist, first of all. You see, mm-hmm. like, every blade of grass with its own shading, every line and vein, like, in most anime and manga, when someone will lose their arm, it'll just be kind of like, uh, red, like a red circle with like blood splurting out of the side mm-hmm. when someone loses an arm in this, it like you, you see bone, you see veins you see like actual anatomy and stuff 
to the gruesomeness, and that just makes it all the more gruesome and all the more detailed and all the more beautiful. Mm-hmm. Frankly, just like seeing every little detail and knowing every little detail going on in the main character's mind as he's facing down this new opponent and trying to think of ways ways that he can gain the upper hand and the upper hand may involve him being a little bit dirty but at the same time it also involves him living to fight another day yeah no i get that See, I love how you say things like, you know, I don't, like, read all this culture stuff, and then, like, the very next second, you're just like, hey, this is a historical drama dealing with, like, these really deep themes. Like, that sounds really it's awesome, bro. His- it's not necessarily a historical drama. Well, it's not, like, based on real events. It's based on a real character, and it's more, like, mm. an offshoot of, okay. like, kind of, ex- kind of explaining this man's this mm-hmm. by making up your own events of mm-hmm. what he's done. I get your point. Historical fiction, then. It's set during yeah, a specific like, time period. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like a King Arthur type thing. Mm-hmm. Like, King Arthur didn't actually find the Holy Grail and yeah. the sea ice and mm-hmm. the, the trees uh, thing. Excalibur from the Lady in the Lake, but what? it was a very... He was a very popular and very revered leader. Yeah. Now, King Arthur myths are actually really interesting. I remember, um, like, watching that um, overly sarcastic productions video on it, like, 15 times, probably. Oh, yeah. O- overly sarcastic productions. That's, another, that's, that's a really good channel, if any of y'all haven't seen it before. Yeah, what uh, y'all doing not watching that channel? <laughs> yeah, I... I love it for the history and the animation. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Ryan, you do too. But yeah. it's just very mm-hmm. well done talking about different um it's a lot of it's a lot of look into yeah. literature and history and it is. It's done in a very on an artistic way. It is. I'm really down for a lot of this stuff. They do um a lot of folklore discussions. I think they were like doing a series on what was it? <sighs> Journey to the West, that was it. And they also, I remember Red did like a little mini podcast called Trope Talks, where she discusses things like, well, she discusses tropes. Dal Ryan is in the title. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of them, I read, um, I read, what am I thinking of? American Gods, based on their recommendation in one of their videos. And that that book, that book fucking slapped. So good. That book was that was fun um but yeah they're mm-hmm. i don't know they're a really good channel so, oh yeah um just yeah, to circle it back to that american and they hmm? definitely know what they're talking about yeah definitely um just to circle it back to that american gods that you mentioned because i read that book last year i loved it too and also like some real tea if like when we start playing like D and you like might notice some similarities yes i did plagiarize that entire novel <laughs> But, um, of course, yeah. like, not the plot, like, a lot of the concept, it was already something I was, like, you know, kind of fiddling with, because of Gun and Crane Court, it's this really great webcomic, but, um, basically, I just, American Gods was so well written, it's like, you know, an adult Rick Royden, almost, and I think my favorite thing about it is that Neil Gaiman is, like, British, right, or English of some kind, pretty sure he's, like, you know what I mean? Uh, Neil, Neil Gaiman is from England. Okay, because, like... I'm always, like, a little iffy, because, like, I, they might be, like, you know, Welsh or Scottish or something, but, yeah, so basically, like, he, my dad, like, grow up in America, and he really captures, like, Americana so well. He really captures the American vibe in a way that's, I think, kind of hard to nail down, and I just want to give him kudos for that, because there's, like, definitely people that, like, probably like, have written things from America who are Americans, and they don't capture that kind of, like, small-town America vibe, that very, I guess, American regional regional feel that we love to see in our media. Yeah. I, well, the, the, thing, the thing is, mm-hmm. with that, it's an Englishman writing about the American experience. I feel like some, some 
people were saying it's kind of disingenuous and that someone like him couldn't capture the American experiment, experience as much as I couldn't catch mm-hmm. the English experience. But at the same time, the, the theme of the story is very much about coming to America and what the what the landscape and the settings mm-hmm. and the whole myriad of people who also came to America uh, mm-hmm. how all of their ideas intermingle with your own and how in turn those intermingled ideas start to get I don't know start, start to get twisted and become yeah. something that they weren't to begin with and I think that works great for the kind of the kind of tone that it does it works a lot for our story Damon is going for in the story yeah i think that's like something that's a really good thing to point out because i think a lot of the things that um i don't i know there's a specific like term for the idea but i remember like a lot of times when i was in history class and we were talking about like you know ellis island and Im- intimidation immigration one of the things was that a lot of people were re- like, oh, we don't want, like, you know, immigrants. And it was really ironic because at that point in time in America, a lot of the people that were, like, saying that were maybe second or third generation Americans. And so throughout, like, American history, we always have this perceived notion that we always have, like, a lot of, like, anti-immigrant status, even though most, unless, like, you know, you're indigenous or first nation in America, most Americans are usually children of immigrants. And obviously that line gets no, a lot no, more... Even- I mean, true point. That's actually a really yeah. great point there. Yeah, so... But, like, I always think that's, like, really important to, like, mention. And I think that that's kind of the thing is that in America, like, everyone's kind of living on Brawl's Hero. Everyone's kind of, like, ebbed and flown. And there is obviously a lot of discussion that you can go into, like, topics like that. But I think it's always important to, like, you know, state that... America is a land of immigrants. That's always been a really thorough line of our history as a people, as a culture, as whatever you want to really phrase it. Um, another thing I thought was really interesting that you... Mm-hmm, another thing I thought you interesting in mentioning was um, the idea that a English person writing for American experience was disingenuous. I, on one hand, I definitely agree there is probably some stories that need to be written from, I guess... A person's own culture, a person's own perspective. Um, one thing that comes to mind is I read a book called Fress by, and I'm just going to like look up their name for a second because it's I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, that's it. So I read this a novel named Fresh by. Give me a second. I just had the name and then Iwaki and Messi. They're um a non-binary. Igbo offer, I believe. I don't believe that's their, like, exact ethnicity, but I do remember that's part of their heritage. And basically, Fresh deals with a lot of different aspects. It talks about their immigration. It talks about their life in Nigeria. It talks about, like, you know, their heritage. And also, the dealings with Obanji, which is, like, this spiritual folklore belief in Igbo culture. And, obviously, for a book like that, that deals with so many aspects and is so very clearly tied into, like, you know, that culture, it would be, like, super ingenuous for, like, you know, somebody who isn't Igbo or isn't, like, you know, from that culture or heritage to really talk about those things. But at the same time... Uh, Yeah. mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also think that writers, like, you know, I think there's definitely stories that people should only tell if they like really had that experience because they're writing from a place of personal i guess life but i also think that like you know for writers they shouldn't be afraid to include other stories Mm -hmm. writing is like a personal experience in and of itself all i'm getting at with american gods is that it being a story about immigration to america Mm -hmm. like when you when you get down to the brass tacks of it uh the story being written by an American immigrant or someone who for a while moved to America yeah. and was experiencing America mm-hmm. on his own for the first time, much in the way the characters in the books were, I feel like that's a perfect 
that's that's a perfectly novel method of of writing a story like American Gods. No, that's a really good point, and I definitely agree with that. Um, there's one more thing I would like to shout out about American Gods, and that's just, can we appreciate that this is a very popular fantasy novel that actually has, like, you know, racial and sexual diversity in it? Because, like, that's just, it shouldn't be a big thing, but fantasy has a really bad problem with representation. Yeah, the, whole, the whole plot of the book is about uh, diversity. It's, mm-hmm. it's about diversity. It's about mixing of the diversities and yeah. how, how some diversities over enough time and over enough mixing get, get watered down to some extent. Yeah, very much yeah. the melting pot theory when we're talking about immigration. Right, and at the same time, that melting pot didn't always do good for some of the ideas that came over from the other country. Some of them like in the book just evaporated away and mm-hmm. aren't aren't quite what they used to be back where they came from. No, I think that's a really good point. And this there's really so much you can like unpack and analyze just because like when you're dealing with a set of concepts whether we're thinking of things like you know assimilation or just the way that religions are syncreticized by like you know i guess colonizers whether that's the catholic church or the british you know so it's like it's always interesting just because all like you know the american goss is like you know about about like you know, the immigration experience but it also has like a lot of the concepts of like you know how ideas are made like and so many things it's it's just a really great novel. Like, uh, I think like the big takeaway we can take from this is that if the audience hasn't listened to this book or read this book, they need to like listen to slash read it. Oh yeah. 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 It's it's not that big of a time sink either, and mm-hmm. it's a very it, 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 it's a very fun read. Mm-hmm. It's a little big, I would say, but it does read very quickly. Yeah, it, it goes off on some tangents here and there. There are little mini stories within. Yeah. Actually, the mini stories are probably my favorite part, the coming to America bits. Mm-hmm. I love those. Those were really good, and I definitely love when you have, like, vignettes and stories. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I'm, like, a big Bradbury fan, and he did that, like, a lot of his, like, sh- collections, and it's just... I love how it tied in, like, a lot of, like, bits of lore in the actual book itself, so... Those were great. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I think that was uh, a... Oh. Story is, I don't know, check out American Gods, check out all the really telecast productions, or don't, you know, go out and learn your, experience your own thing. Yeah, it's like... Well, free will. We'll talk about it here, you, maybe, I don't yeah. know, maybe you'll go check it out in turn. Yeah. So, let's see, I think that was our... Icebreaker, did you want to talk about anything else, or are we thinking about wrapping this up? Um, well, I mean, while we're here, I guess mm-hmm. we can just, I don't know, give like a little more information of what we're planning to do with this, what we're planning to do with this podcast, maybe? I think that's a really great idea, so, I'm trying, now that like, well, actually get caught on it, I'm trying to like, think about format and everything else. So I guess one of the things is we should probably, sorry, I'm just blanking. So I was thinking that we were doing maybe a monthly podcast, and how do you feel about that? Does that work with your schedule, or? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely down for monthly right now. Mm-hmm. If it turns out, for some reason, people start liking this, and you know, we could do it more often, then yeah. I don't know, just work from there. We're, we're kind of at the whims of whoever mm-hmm. um, the ethos is listening to us right now. See, I, I'm speaking for myself, I've never done a podcast before. I've never done a long term mm-hmm. talking segment to other individuals yeah. before. So this is new ground for me. Yeah. For someone who's written a lot of research on other podcasts, I'm mm-hmm. sure you have a little bit more of a grasp on things, but that's I mean, I definitely I'm do have more experience in this type of skill set, but you know, it is a pretty new experience to myself as well. But, um, yeah. 
I think one thing we should probably mention at this point is we always got to be plugging. So if you are listening to this, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I know everyone asked that, but it would really help us get out there and meet more of our hunky audience members. I'm trying to make that a, a thing. Hey, hey, hey call back. But, um, yeah, so, you know, I think that it's okay if our format is not always that consistent. Like, you know, episode to episode, but I know we're going to have, like, a bunch of different types of things that we want to do. Um, I think what would be really fun is we could both, like, pitch an episode idea, like, just something that we had in mind, and that could be kind of, like, a fun thing for, like, the audience to, like, talk about or, like, pitch their own episode ideas if they want. So, I'm um, actually, I did have one. Hmm? The origin of this entire format came from, hey, what if we do a podcast about, um, I like one thing from this, uh, realm of media, you like this other thing from this similar realm of media, why yes. don't we get together and have an argument on which version is better, and it's kind of intended to be, uh, like done in a humorous manner while at the same time just kind of talking about things that we like getting yeah. things onto the ethos and comparing that kind of stuff in the ethos. Yeah. So I think that's a really good point. So but if it turns into if it turns into something else, it turns into something else. Oh, yeah. And I think that's that's you know, the first podcast. Yeah. Uh, that, that's actually getting recorded. <laughs> well, no, I definitely do love that format, and I have plenty of ideas for it. At the same time, it's like, I do have a few ideas that are similar, but, like, you know, might shake things up a bit. But, like you said, so, if I was going to do, like, a topic, I'd probably go just because I know I'm a horror geek, but feminist horror. There's some really good movies that just deal with the female experience and that would be a really great thing to talk about since horror can definitely bit be a bit male gazy at times definitely not always have a lot of different there's like definitely some issues in horror like depending on like what we're talking about um depictions of sexual assault is one if we're just like you know throwing that out there so Obviously, there's some pretty good feminist horror movies that would be really fun to talk about. One of them I need to see. I don't know if it's horror. It might just... Hmm? But hey, that's that's just an example of... Yeah. A fairly specific genre that we could talk about. It could also be about... I don't know. Uh... Genre... Like... Uh... Rock pop music or something. I don't know. It's... Okay, that would be really... We're going to have more things written down in the future, I promise that. Yeah. I should also mention, fam, that I do have a spreadsheet on the drive with, like, some ideas on it. That, yeah, that's, that's going to help a lot. I, I think right now, this is the much more open format. We're going kind of off the dome on our very first podcast. I I, I see us getting better at this in the, in the future, in the near future. Yeah. Uh, especially if we start writing stuff down and we're not just... <laughs> Ad-libbing. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Like... Add-libbing from time to time, but at a certain point... It's, 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 having it's, talking it's, points, being able to sort of stick to an episode flow. Yeah, these are all skills we're developing, and hopefully our audience will be happy to come along with the ride. I think we're both two pretty fun people. Yeah. I think we play off each other well. So, you know, just like if you guys want to hang out, maybe some you got maybe our hunky audience members are doing their laundry or driving to like you know work or something. They can just pop them in their ears. That's what I like to do with podcasts. It's almost like it's an audio like I'm medium. Like, wow, I can relate to that. Oh yeah, I always got my hair earbuds in, not because I dislike people, but just because I constantly need noise to drown out the demons in my head. Yay! <laughs> I tried to drown my demons, but they know how to no. swim. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. I have a lot of ideas. I know you have a lot of ideas. So we're just gonna we're gonna rock this party nonstop. Yeah. Mm. 
Infinite Futures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so should I play us out? And if this does start, oh. Yeah, and actually, no, also, real quick, mm -hmm. if this does start popping off, we'll get even better audio equipment. How about that? You, you blow us up, we'll, we'll increase the quality. That sounds good. Guys, for our first episode, how about we try to get for 25 likes? That way you know that, you know, you're listening. And tell us what, if you have read American Gods, tell us what you think. And if you haven't, tell us who your favorite deity is. Any culture, any pantheon, just let us know. We'd love to hear your folklore opinions. That's what we call engagement. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, yeah, folklore no, is great. Mm -hmm. If it's yeah i feel that like so, i feel like everyone really just in western culture we kind of definitely have a giant boner for creek mythology which i get it it's pretty chill but i think he was definitely also I, trying I really to be fair, I think more in the West we have a bigger boner for Roman mythology than Greek. That's true, but it's like Roman got a big boner for Greek mythology though. Yeah. Like we have I think we have equally sized boners most of the time. It's like we just like both of those cultures like we're pretty obsessed with, but I would say we have a slightly bigger boner for Greeks just because I can name, like, you know, beside... I can name most of, like, the Greek gods, but you ask me, like, oh, who's Minerva? And I'm just, like, I have to think of a second and translate into, like, who that is in Greek, you know? Okay, well, you know what? How about this? Name a planet, and then ask me again. Um, you Uranus. Okay, well, that's pretty much the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Minerva is the Roman god of time? He might be. Yeah, because uh, Pluto's death. Pluto's is Hades. Pluto's is time. Okay. Oh, that doesn't help. Okay, so it says it was named. So in Greek, you. Oh no! Hey. Okay. Yeah. Just imagine if you want to hear a full episode of us. I will bring my notes back. <laughs> yeah, we just get into a giant fight over like the entomology of Hypnos and Somnos, just like going at it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sounds like an idea. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, no worries. I'm going to give us a, like a little kind of closer, and then that's going to be our episode. Thanks for listening, guys. Cool. Oh, yeah, thank you indeed. Mm-hmm. So, this commemorates the first episode of the Spaghetti in Motion podcast. If you'd like us to grow our brand, please make sure to like, share, or subscribe. And if you're interested as well, we have many beautiful, beautiful social medias you can follow. We're available on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, and is it, is it, I'm trying to remember if there's any more. I'm how to use Twitter. Oh, that's it, and Twitter. So, if you are on any of those platforms, please check us out. Remember to follow, and I'm going to try to keep our update schedule pretty consistent with, like, you know, letting you know about new episodes. And I don't remember I said it before, but make sure to subscribe to our official YouTube channel page for the next time that we drop an episode. Thanks for watching. Listening? I don't know. I don't think we figured out a call, a way to like end the. Uh, Peace out, you hunks. Peace out, you hunks. I like that. Okay. So, I'm going to end the. Okay. We're figuring it out. <laughs>